वेलकम बैक एस द टाइम एस फाइन लिखम वेलवे रिलीज द स्टेबल बिल्ड ऑफ स्टीम ओ एस वर्जन थ्री पॉइंट फाइव एंड इट्स एक्चुअली इट्स लेटेस्ट बिल्ड दैट इज वर्जन थ्री पॉइंट फाइव पॉइंट फाइव इट्स अ मेजर अपडेट एज कम्पेयर टू द प्रीवियस स्टेबल बिल्ड अपडेट्स द लिनक्स कर्नल बायोस एंड इवन जी पी यू ड्राइवर्स इंक्लूड्स टर्स ऑफ न्यू फिक्सेज एंड फीचर्स आई हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड मोस्ट ऑफ दम इन माई स्टीम ओ एस प्रीव्यू बिल्ड वीडियोज सो आई कीप इट शॉर्ट इन दिस वीडियो एंड जस्ट गिव यू समरी ऑफ द फीचर्स There are a few things that you need to know if you are updating to this latest stable build from the previous stable build. If you have refined script installed on your deck for the purpose of dual booting Windows and Steam OS, the script is going to get deleted due to the BIOS update. Don't worry, your Windows partition won't get deleted; it will still be present. Steam Deck may not be able to boot into Steam OS automatically. If this happens, you will be manually required to boot into Steam OS via Steam Deck's BIOS interface. After that, just switch to Steam OS desktop mode and reinstall the refined script. The entire process is shown on Tech Wizards YouTube channel. I'll drop the video link in the description. Now you'll be able to access both Windows and Steam OS partitions via the refined script. This update updates the BIOS to version 118. This is going to reset the UMA buffer size value to 1 GB. So if you're using the Cryo Utility tool of Windows, don't forget to set the UMA buffer size value to 4 GB from Steam Deck's BIOS menu. The new BIOS also allows us to undervolt Steam Deck's processor. The offset values offered by Valve are too small. Undervolting a processor is useful in reducing its temperature, improves its thermal performance, which helps in preventing its throttling. This makes it easier for the user to overclock the processor. But the thing is, Valve does not allow overclocking of the processor with this BIOS build. You can try experimenting with the different undervolt offset values if you experience any crashing issues while playing games. Just revert to the default settings or the last known stable configuration. I'll show you how to access the BIOS menu now. First, just shut down Steam Deck. Need to press and hold the up volume button and the power button until you hear a beep. There you go. Release the buttons. There's the BIOS menu. Just go to Setup Utility. Go to Advanced section. You have a frame buffer size value. It will be set to 1G by default. I have set it to 4G. These offset values correspond to CPU, GPU, and SOC voltage. Their value ranges from 0 millivolt to minus 50 millivolt. You can start with a minus 20 millivolt value for each of these offsets. Minus 20, minus 20, again minus 20. These values were very stable for my Steam Deck; did not observe any crashing issue. I would not recommend starting with a higher value like minus 50 millivolt. Stability of the system will vary from processor to processor. Revert it to default values. There is the refined script working fine. This is the system section. There is the Steam OS version 3.5.5, OS build kernel version. Mesa GPU driver has been updated to version 23.1.3. You will definitely observe less stuttering in games that use DXVK due to the implementation of RADV graphics pipeline library. It works by default. You don't need to do anything. DXVK is a translation layer that translates direct 3D 9, 10, and 11 calls to Vulkan. GPL also helps in reducing the size of the shader cache files for the games. Moving on to the updated display settings, Valve has added sliders to adjust the color vibrancy and temperature. You can access these settings from Adjust Display Color Setting. With this build, the default color rendering profile is set to sRGB to emulate the sRGB color gamut, resulting in a slightly warmer and more vibrant color appearance. as compared to the native color rendering profile that was present on the previous table bill you can notice the change in colors by observing this image we also have a boosted color vibrance profile it emulates a wider gamut display appearance resulting in increased apparent vibrance you can even change the color temperature value you can tweak these settings even when a game is running in the background will make it easier for you to decide the best color profile depending on the game Vibrant Deck Techy plugin becomes redundant with the addition of these settings. So just make sure you have disabled Vibrant Deck. Back to the display settings. Steam Deck now supports both HDR and VR on supported external displays. Just to be clear, Steam Deck's own LCD panel does not support these features. OLED variant does support HDR, but it does not support VR. Another new setting has been added to the display section: enable Unified Frame Limit Management. If you enable it. The sliders for refresh rate and FPS will get combined. Their values will change simultaneously until we drop down to 40. Going below this value will result in an FPS value that is half of the refresh rate value. I'll just demonstrate this. Go to the performance tab from Quick Access menu. You can see the values adjacent to frame limit. 
60 fps and 60 hertz I'll reduce these values both of them are changing simultaneously now when I try to set a value of fps less than 40 it changes to 30 instead of going down to 39 and the refresh rate changes to 60 hertz so if you want the separate sliders you can always disable this setting there you go entirely up to you I'll keep it enabled now I'll be covering the storage section from here you can get to know about the storage space that the games and shader cache files are consuming on your internal drive I would still recommend using storage cleaner decky plugin to get to know about the shader cache size for the individual games it even tells the compare data size for them I'll just show you this storage cleaner plugin you can see the shader cache size for the individual games even the cache size for the third party launchers is shown compare data size there you go external storage devices are now auto mounted when connected to steam deck if you want to format your memory card just select it press the y key there is the option to format it eject it this is the directory for the sd card now i had installed a few emulators via emudeck on the previous table build these emulators were still able to access the games that were present in the game rom directory of emudeck even after updating to the latest stable build scrolling through the steamos gaming mode interface is a very fluid experience steam and quick access menus immediately pop up upon pressing of their corresponding buttons as you can see barely any delay performance overlay levels have been updated we can even customize them first i'll show you the new steamos overlay levels level 1 shows the fps counter level 2 shows a horizontal overlay includes the fps counter frame time graph cpu and gpu usage their power draw ram and vram usage battery percentage total power draw and the remaining play time then we have overlay level 3 it does not show the total power draw overlay level 4 lot of details are shown individual cpu usage and clock speeds it even shows the status of fsr now i'll show you how to customize the overlay level switch to steamos desktop mode open dolphin file explorer click on home then click on the hamburger icon here check the settings show hidden files then look for dot config folder there it is here you need to create a new folder and name it as mango hut open it right click in the empty area select create new click on text file name it as psets.conf there you go open it now there are four parameters that are enabled by default we need to disable them explicitly otherwise they will be highlighted in the overlay just set them to zero in order to disable them these parameters are fps frame timing cpu and gpu load then we can just add the variable that we want to highlight in the overlay on mango hut's github page list of variables has been provided their description is also available it's a big list I'll just create some custom overlay levels preset 1 here corresponds to overlay level 1 in this overlay I just want to show the current time nothing else so I have typed time in the second line and I have set these variables to 0 fps cpu underscore stats gpu underscore stats and frame underscore timing then we have overlay level 2 in the next line I have typed horizontal for the horizontal overlay table underscore columns equal to 10 in this overlay i want to highlight the current time fps counter and battery level so i have set cpu stats gpu stats frame timing and frame time to zero then we have the third overlay level i have set it to full i wanted to highlight all of the performance parameters just click on save here let's test this back to steamos gaming mode performance tab i'll set overlay level to one you can see the current time overlay level set to two you can see the current time battery level and fps counter overlay level set to 3 all of the parameters are shown now it's very detailed frame count resolution fps limit this is steamos overlay level 4 so if you want to revert to the original overlay levels just delete the config file 
go back to the mango heart folder and delete this cunf file that's it there you go now i'll be covering other settings in the performance tab first we have disable frame limit setting enabling this setting will remove the 60 fps gap game will be running at an fps higher than 60 if the hardware supports it just keep in mind this will increase the power draw and may lead to overheating of the system then we have alert airing setting it disables steamos vsync helps in reducing latency i always use this setting whenever i am running any cloud gaming service on steam deck avoid using half rate shading setting it can help in improving performance in some games but can make the games look very pixelated tdp limit setting using it we can set the maximum limit for the apu's tdp default maximum limit is 50 a lower tdp limit will help in improving the battery life at the cost of performance you need to find the sweet spot a tdp value less than 15 watts where there is barely any performance regression i'll disable it manual gpu clock by default the gpu clock speed values jump between 200 and 1040 megahertz 1600 megahertz is the max clock frequency in some cpu demanding games setting the gpu clock frequency to a lower value can help in improving the performance new sliders have been provided for scaling mode and filter they come with some new aspect ratios and upscaling technique i'll demonstrate their function in gta 5 gameplay that i'll show in the later part nvidia's image scaling up sampling technique has been added it's akin to amd's fsr does not use any ai to upscale the image from a lower resolution to a higher resolution this helps in reducing the gpu load which results in a better in-game performance in gpu demanding scenarios image quality difference between these two upscaling techniques vary from game to game Steam Deck Docs firmware has been updated to version 1 to 1. I don't have the dock to test it. Added VRR support. Some general fixes. Added support for Steam Deck OLED. This variant is available now. Fixed an issue with certain workloads. Would exhibit severe CPU performance issues unless SMT was manually disabled. SMT allows a CPU core to process two tasks simultaneously. Basically, when we disable SMT, we disable the logical cores. Steam Deck's Ryzen processor only has 4 physical cores. Disabling SMT on Steam Deck leads to noticeable gains in emulators like PCSS2 Dolphin and many more. This is because these emulators cannot utilize more than 3 or 4 cores of the CPU. Prior to this stable build, Steam Deck users were using PowerTools Decky plugin to disable SMT. I'll test this feature in Final Fantasy 13. Game Info section using Proton Compatibility Live version 8.0 Dash 4. In game settings using HD resolution MSA set to 2x. Start game. I have set the overlay level to 4. Refresh rate and frame rate limit set to 60. And that's it. Okay, so here we are getting 60 FPS. It seems the auto SMT feature is not working. I'll use Power Tools Decky plugin. SMT enabled. I'll disable it. Four physical cores are being used now, and you can see FPS increased to 60. So I would not recommend uninstalling Power Tools Decky plugin. Valve has also updated KDE Plasma Steam Desk Desktop mode. Few highlights: new window tiling system, updated Discover Store with a New home page and improved search. Discover can now perform system updates from desktop. Updated desktop widgets. Now I'll be running GTA 5 to test the different aspect ratios and upsampling techniques. Game info section Steam Deck compatibility marked as playable using Proton Experimental as the compatibility layer. In game settings, native resolution set to 800 by 600 pixels. DirectX 11 API, FX AA enabled. Population density and variety set to 50%, distance scaling set to 50% as well, all of the settings have been set to high, reflection MSAA disabled, nil motion blur 10, 16 times anisotropic filtering, performance tab, OLA level set to 2, scaling mode is set to auto, I'll just change it to integer, yeah this seems to be the original resolution, text is looking much sharper now. I'll use fit scaling mode. I can see some black bars on either side of the screen. Now I'll use stretch scaling mode. 
देर गो इमेज कॉट टेस्ट फिल स्केलिंग मोड द टॉप एंड द बॉटम पार्ट ऑफ द डिस्प्ले गॉट क्लिप्ड सो आई गो बैक टू स्ट्रेच स्केलिंग मोड स्टार्ट द स्टोरी मोड वेल वेज इम्प्रूव द वेकअप टाइम फ्रॉम स्लीप विथ दिस बिल्ड एज वेल आई जस्ट पुट स्टीम टेक टू स्लीप टेस्ट द फीचर देर यू गो फैन स्टॉप स्पिनिंग वेक इट अप ओके इट टूक अबाउट टू सेकेंड्स फॉर द सिस्टम टू वेक अप इमेज क्वालिटी इज लुकिंग अ बिट सॉफ्ट pixelated not using any up sampling technique i'll just use it now first i'll use fsr set the sharpness level to 5 yeah it's working you can confirm it by setting the overlay level to 4 check out the quality looks decent but not as good as the native image 800p i'll switch to nis here you go excessive level of sharpening has been applied i am observing more jagginess around the objects and items with nis as compared to fsr In this game, I would prefer FSR. Switch back to it. Here you go. Set the only level to two. Total power draw around twenty one point two watts. It's increasing. Follow Lama. Driving around the city, here we are getting around 60 FPS. Yeah, FPS is mostly staying around 60. That's really good to see. Sometimes it used to drop down to as low as 50 on the older builds. 54 FPS there for about a second. Going to the studio. We ran over some guys. People in alien costume. Here you go. Half done. Going to the alley. Here you go. That's it with my coverage. I hope you found the video useful, guys. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.